it was sometime last year. I can't remember the exact dates, but I was taking a trip down to uh, Dallas, um, headed down there uh, for a few things. And so hopped on a flight there in Columbus. Uh, Love to fly, as y'all know. But got on the flight. Flight was uh, relatively uneventful, which is a very good thing. Flew down to Dallas, and we got to Dallas a little early. And there was a young lady sitting next to me. Uh, she works, uh, she lives there in Dallas, but with her job, uh, she does a lot of uh, traveling back and forth from Dallas to Columbus. And she said it was very unusual that we got there early, but we got there a little early. And so we, we began to just uh, uh, circle the, uh, the city there. Uh, we went into a holding pattern uh, there in the, at the flight. And I'm not sure exactly how long uh, we were uh, in that holding pattern, but it gave plenty of time to see the city. Uh, of course, uh, Dallas, Fort Worth, um, uh, uh, Arlington there, of course. And so there was a time for me to uh, just enjoy the, uh, the city, to see what it looked like from above. And it was, it was rather nice, but we, we flew around for a little while in that holding pattern until it was, we were clear to land. And so we, we circled the city, uh, landed uneventful, and then carried about our business, went on about our business, whatever uh, everybody was there for. But we did that uh, for a while. And I was thinking, while we're in the midst of all of this the stuff that's going on, uh, I got to thinking about a verse I wanted to share with everybody uh, here. It's in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, and it's verse number 58. Let me read that to you. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Let me read that one part again to you. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. This is a very unusual time that we find ourselves in with everything going on uh, right now. And I hope and I pray that in your personal walk with God, you do not simply go into a holding pattern until everything gets back to normal. I pray that you don't go into a holding pattern uh, with the Lord until we can all come back and gather together here at the church or uh, things kind of get back to our same old, same old normal routine. Now is, especially now is a time for us to resist that, to fight that, but to remain steadfast, uh, to remain unmovable, and for us to not become lazy. Don't slip into a holding pattern. Now is the time that all those sermons that you've heard have been preparing you for. Now is the time, since we're going through all of this, that all of those Sunday school lessons have been preparing you for. And now is the time that the discipleship has been preparing you for during a difficult time. Now it is a time to be steadfast and unmovable and always, as the verse says, uh, always abounding in the work of the Lord. So how can we do that? How can we abound in the work of the Lord when we're stuck at home and we're bored? Well, I want to give you three suggestions here uh, this evening. Three suggestions to help you do that. How can we do it? It's something we uh, uh, talk about at the church all the time. Something you're very familiar with. It's love God, love others, and serve others. You can do that. We can do that even when we're uh, at home and we're bored. First thing, love God. How can we do that at home? I think that was a, a pretty simple one. We can pray. If you've got some extra time on your hands now, now you can spend some extra time in prayer. Uh, if if the, uh, the reason that you haven't prayed is because there's too much going on, too busy with everything, listen, we've got some downtime now. Spend some time with God in prayer. Start your day with him in prayer. Go to him throughout the day in prayer. 
Now you've got the time, take advantage of it and take your time in doing it. Don't just pray before a meal. Don't just say a quick prayer. Take your time. Spend some time in prayer with the Lord. Spend some time in the Word of God. Now you've got some time to do it. Spend some time reading the Word of God. And not just reading it, but studying it. Uh, searching it out. Meditating upon it. Uh, you've got time to do that now. Uh, don't just simply read it and check it off the list of things to do throughout the day. Study it. Think about it. Really spend some time and fall in love. Renew that love of, of, that you have for the Lord through this time by spending time with Him in prayer. By spending time in His Word. So love God. It's the first time that you can continue to follow God through this time. Second one is love others. Love others. If you are stuck at home with some loved ones, you're probably going to get on each other's nerves from time to time, but make the best of this time with them. I love them as much as you can. My first suggestion is just have some fun with them. Laugh with them. Goof around with them. Just have some fun. Be goofy. Uh, who cares? Nobody's coming over. Nobody's stopping over. It's just you and your family. Have some fun. Uh, just enjoy each other's company. As far as your work with the Lord uh, in this time with them, uh, I would say have a Bible study with your family. Uh, spend some time together in the scripture. If you haven't done that before with your spouse, with your kids, with your parents, with your grandparents, whoever it may be, now's the time to start doing that. Read, read God's word together. Uh, spend some time in that together. It may be a little weird uh, for you, maybe because you haven't done it before, but now's the time to start doing that. And it'll get easier and easier. Spend time in the uh, word together. Pray together. That's something that may be foreign to you as well. But pray with one another. Take turns praying. And it may be awkward at first, but and I encourage you to pray with one another. You've got the time. You've got the opportunity. Let's make the best of it. Once you're reading the Bible together, once you're uh, uh, praying together, I would encourage you to take, a step, take it a step further. I would encourage you to sing uh, together. And you might be thinking to yourself, what? You want us to sing together? Yes, you can sing together. You can worship God together with your family right there in your, ha in your house, right there at home. Sing some songs together. Who cares if you're off key? Who cares if you can't sing? Worship God together. Every single day you have an opportunity to do this with your family members. Take advantage of that time. Love God. Love others. And then th the third, of course, we know is to serve others. How can we do that? Well, you can serve one another there in the home. Uh, but beyond that, even in this time of uh, social distancing, uh, we can still serve one another. Call and check on one another. Make that a, a daily routine. Maybe get a daily habit uh, to call people, uh, check on them. You can call, you can text, you can FaceTime. There's all kinds of ways uh, that we can serve one another, check on one another uh, in that way. And when you're doing that, uh, not just seeing how they're doing, but pray with them. Pray with each other over the phone. Pray with each other uh, through a FaceTime, uh, whatever you have to do. Spend some time and serve one another by praying for one another. Maybe you're having a rough day. Maybe you're going through a, a time of uneasiness about all of this. Pray for one another to help uh, get through that. You can serve one another by praying for one another, even in this time when we are apart. Not only praying with one another, you can uh, study scripture together. Uh, share, share with the person you're, you're talking to what you read in the scripture that day. What has God showed you? What is God speaking to you through the scripture? And then you can go back and forth. You can share with one another what's going on, how God's speaking to each of you. And that can be a, such a huge encouragement uh, to one another to share uh, how God is speaking to you uh, through his word. And then, of course, uh, beyond all of that, if somebody needs something, uh, and are unable to get out or shouldn't be uh, getting out uh, at this time, be willing to go get something for them. Uh, pick up something for them. If you've got it and they need it, be willing to share it. Uh, if they are out of toilet paper and you got some, give them a few rolls. Uh, that's what we're supposed to do for one another. 
And so uh, this is a good opportunity for us to stay busy following the Lord uh, by loving him, uh, by loving others and serving others. And especially now, we need to be creative uh, and flexible in order to do this. We need to think outside the box. Uh, we need to step outside of our comfort zone and maybe sing with one another, pray with one another, study the scripture with one another, stay in touch with one another. We need to be, be willing to do these things. And that's all a part of what that verse in 1 Corinthians fifteen fifty eight is saying, that we would be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. And we can be faithful to do that even in these trying times. So don't go into uh, a holding pattern in this time. Follow Jesus. I love y'all. I miss y'all. Praying for y'all. And I cannot wait until we can all be together once again. Until next time.